were rejoicing because their economy grew at 1.7% this year. Microsoft grew at 40 to 50%. Apple grew, grew at 60. Facebook grew at between 30 and 40%. 3.7% and 40% are not the same leap. If we don't become creative, we'll continue to play catch up. We'll continue to be consumers. Number seven, characteristic of creative people is penetration. They penetrate into the market. They think deeply. They think penetratively, which have too many people who do surface thinking, surface level ability, surface level of uh, answers to a question, surface level solution, instead of being very penetrative to really get to the root of a matter, uh, to the root of the issue. Very key for us to realize that if you are going to change your world, you have to be the kind of people who penetrate and look again. Let me take Kenya, for example. Look again at even your, your meal, just take the maze, penetrate and think, what else can be used, can this thing be useful? You know that many Kenyans don't even realize the world will not be able to survive without a good chunk of the maize that comes from Africa because while we eat it in our ugali, somebody is converting it to the gum and to the, to the adhesion material in the custard they sell to us, in the glue they sell to us, in the, anything that has adhesion has some degree of African maize. But we see our maize, we see, our maize, we see Ugali. Or if you are Zimbabwean, you see Zaza. Or if you are South African, you see Pap. If you are Ghanaian, you see Kenke. But the world sees something that creates adhesion. We need to look again. Nigerians love to eat cassava. Whereas cassava manioc is also an adhesion material. I'm actually being told that it is part of what makes the American dollar. Can you believe that? The American paper dollar has like 40% tapioca. Tapioca is gotten from cassava. So Nigerians look at cassava, they see food. America looks at cassava, it sees Benjamin Franklin, we need to penetrate. To bring my teacher to a conclusion, let me share a few more things with you. Observe new trends and track the new trends. Always know what's happening in your world. Begin to ask questions of how can I be creative to be part of this new trend? Kenya is being celebrated right now in Africa as gradually becoming the the Silicon Valley of Africa. Be part of that flow so you can bless the body of Christ, so you can impact your world. Number two, visit trade shows to see what is being done. Don't stay in your house. Visit trade shows so you can see the latest, the latest equipment, the latest gears. How did people think about it? How are people bringing solutions. Cars that are made today are almost <laughs> totally intelligent. They do things that you can't imagine. The other day a young man was driving me to church and the Range Rover and uh, I was telling him to be careful not to hit the car. And I said, oh, we can't hit the car. I put it on cruise control and the car will make noise if it is too close to the car in front. I said, oh, wow. That's nice. That is the world in which we are going to. That is the world we are going to. Then visit art galleries. Look at other people's creation. 
Look at how they design things, how they bring solutions, how they think. Then read classics, read what other people have written. Furthermore, volunteer. If you see a place where there's creativity, offer to work for free. Maybe even if it's a restaurant and you want to create your own restaurant, and I tell you as busy as Nairobi is, there's still room for all sorts. There's room for health food. Look into the city. How about the shopping? How about the place in the heart of Nairobi that is just called just fresh fruits and smoothies? And if you apply this idea, make sure you send my tithe to me. <laughs> I mean, just fresh fruits and smoothies. If I see that kind of a place, I'll go there every day. So I don't have to be the one cutting all the pineapples, all the mangoes, all the watermelons. You have cut it, you've created it. And anything you do, you did it with presentation style. And there's a smoothie on the side to drink on top of it. I tell you, you will have too many customers. Then read magazines from different industries. You are surrounded by opportunities. Don't let them slip. If you see something in a magazine and it's not yours, maybe it's in the plane or somewhere and you like it, bring out your phone. Take photographs of the pages. I do that all the time. Don't tear people's magazine. Just take photographs of the pages. There's some photographs of some people you call friends who are really your enemies that you don't need on your phone. Remove those ones and Take photographs of these pages that will bless you. Then uh, know yourself and your giftings. Maybe go online, look for how uh, various tests online that shows you how to test to know your own gifting and ability. Do not allow yourself to spend the rest of your life working in the area of just I just want to survive. I just want to survive. I just want to survive. And I just want salary. I just want food on my table. And I just want clothes for my children. You need to be creative. You need to find your gift. In fact, the day you find what your gifting is, you might just find that one or two ideas produce a marketed global and you retire at 45. Next, notice new demands in the society. Because new cultures are coming up. Young people are not wearing what everybody's wearing anymore. If you have to sell supplements, look online for the companies abroad that sell supplements. Maybe that will be your own creative business. Then observe the new problems in your world. There are new problems. There are new problems of security. Uh, I know that uh, Kenya has the problem with one arm of Islam. Uh, I can't remember the name right now. Nigeria has Boko Haram, and there are different kinds. Christians, we always just like to just go around the house. It's great to speak in tongues, but I would rather also, on top of my speaking in tongues, put cheap, simple, uh, internet-based cameras around my house so that before you even approach, I've already seen you. A young man just designed a very simple concept that is connected to people's phone now called ring.com. So that anywhere you are on earth, if somebody presses the bell of your house, it rings on your phone. And straight away, you can see them. If they're an inviter, you can tell them, what are you looking for in front of my house? Next, imagine the impossible. Because what you think was impossible today becomes possible tomorrow. In 1962-63, President uh, J.F. Kennedy, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, said, one day man will be on the moon. And not long after he said it, he was assassinated. And yes, one day truly, 293, 285,000 kilometers away, man was standing on the moon. It looked impossible. In fact, there are still people today who still have the theory that, ah, did they really go to the moon? Maybe they found a desert somewhere in Mauritania 
and we're bouncing on it. You know, anytime you achieve greatness, you will find some skeptics who cannot handle your, your turning the impossible to possible. Imagine the impossible. Imagine a Kenya one day where you can achieve all your dreams. Imagine an Africa one day where the business you start will be all over the world. And please, it doesn't have to be in your field of learning. He was a lawyer in the United Kingdom in the beginning of the 19th century who came up with the concept of an underground train. The whole nation loved that him. Firstly, because he's a lawyer. How can you imagine underground train, train going underground? He came up with the idea, began the designs himself before he found those who would design it for him. And that's how the London Underground became the first in the world. And then other nations began to copy. You know, here in Britain, we started the world copies. Uh -huh. It was Brunel, another amazing engineer who rose in this United Kingdom, who came up with the concept of an underground road under the River Thames. It sounded stupid, Im unimaginable. How can roads be under a river as deep as the Thames? But today, we have no less than three tunnels through which we drive. Today is Saturday, I'm gonna drive through one of them. Um, you have the Roderite Tunnel, the Blackwall Tunnel, and the Dartford Tunnel, driving under the river. It was his concept that was now used. And now there is a driving under a body of the sea called the English Channels, the water between France and Britain. That's about 20 miles under water. And we take train under that water and go to Paris. It has cut the journey short because it's also a very fast train under water. I remember a little cousin of mine was coming from, I mean, a little niece of mine was come from Africa to do master's degree when we told her this road we're driving through is underwater. It just made her to panic every time we drove under it. She's praying in tongues for us to get to the other end. That's the kind of people we've raised in Africa. Let's be creative. Then form ideas with your friends. Don't always do things alone. Sit down with some people, banter together, sit together, come up with concepts together. And whatever you're coming together with, make sure you agree, you put it in writing, that you own it together. So there is no argument and there is no fight in the future. So uh, there's so much I could share with you. Um, I could have shared with you a lot of ways to, to release your creative skills in my new book. Actually, I have like 71 ways to release your creative skill. Let me share five and I'll stop. Number one, be a child again. Children have no limits in their thinking. My little grandson, well, imagine uh, some little mouse that came to his house and uh, he chased out the mouse and the mouse ran to the house of his cousin uh, and the mouse jumped on the bed of his cousin. He does not realize that there are several uh, motorways between his own house and his cousin's house. How will this mouse cross all those motorways? That's my own adult mind thinking. But him, as a young person, he does not yet see those boundaries. He sees possibilities. We need to be like a child again, to see the possibilities. Do not allow the boundaries to stop you. Number two, do something physical every day that encourages your creativity. Some, even in the course of sharing today, some ideas have crossed your mind. Let those things begin to be possible. Number three, play around with something. That's the reason in your children's nursery, they are giving them colorful things to play with called Lego. These kids are learning to build. They are finding that, okay, if, they, if the Lego they are building is tiny at the bottom, big at the top, it's going to crumble. So they are teaching them architecture without calling it 
architecture. You also do something with your hand. Stop being the kind who you just wake up in the morning, rush to work, come back home, have some food, watch television, go to bed, wake up in the morning, rush to work, come back home, have some food, watch television, go to bed. Get out of that lifestyle. Then sign up to learn something new. Sign up to learn something new. If Kenya is going to be the Silicon Valley of Africa, as it's been announced, right, as it's been bantered around right now, you also go learn something new. Learn how to write apps. There are several, several, several apps nobody has created. Be the one to create maybe the next app that will bless everybody. A young Nigerian living in the city of New York, working at the stock exchange of New York, found that he was always getting lost in the train system of New York. Always getting lost in the train system of New York. He decided to create an app that made it easy for him to negotiate the train system to where he was going. Napster ended buying it from him for $1 billion. The telephone in your hand, a Nigerian young man here in the city of London found that uh, he could never know when his brother calls. So he created a system for knowing when his brother calls. He became the first to create a ringtone, Alexander Amosu. And today ringtone became a big thing in the world. He was 24 and a broke man when he created the ringtone system. By the time he was 25, he was a millionaire. Number five, create the enabling environment. Have a creativity place around you. Find a journal where you write. You wanna write books about children? Write. Create stories. Don't try to bring adult thinking into everything you do. When I was writing my book, I, I even told how easy it is to write stories about that children will enjoy. I was, I was look, my house overlooks a lagoon in Nigeria. And as I was looking at the lagoon, there's a little bush in front. I just imagine some, some rodent that carried other rodents went on the ground and showed up on the other side to go steal some, 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 some potatoes. And then they took the underground rail uh, road back to where to live. Then I made up more of the story that one of them ate one of the potatoes that had a special chemical poured on it without them knowing. Boom, it became a powerful rodent and it's known as super rod. Before you know, you've created a whole story that, uh, that will have series, all these things our children follow, Batman, uh, now they've created Aquaman. They are just somebody sitting down and being creative. And we go and spend our money. In the world of church, in the world of the gospel, the reason for creativity is because in my own understanding and the thing God is speaking in my mind, God wants to prosper the body of Christ. God wants us to be handling great wealth. And the next great wealth is not anywhere else but in creativity. We can see it from around us. Like I told you earlier, 37-year-old Shukran ends up creating Facebook. And today, he is personally worth $65 billion at 37. Hasn't changed his emotions, and I'm not sure he's born again. I don't know much about his spiritual life. But imagine that kind of money in the hand of a believer who can sponsor gospel on television, who can help build churches, who can help reach the unreached. So I pray today as I bring my teaching to conclusion and probably take a few more questions from you that may your hands build can i hear you say amen may you be able to design great things may your hands create may your hands operate may your hands fabricate i pray for the spirit of creativity the anointing of creativity to rest upon you I declare and decree upon your life that the day will come when God will give you unusual ideas, unusual concepts, unusual insight, like you have never used.
the world will see the greatness of God on your life and the blessing of the Lord will rest on your life. You will never, never be the same, but rather you will be the best that has ever been. You will bless your generation. You will touch your generations. You will impact your world in the name of Jesus. Let me close with this scripture. Exodus 35, verse 30 to 35. Exodus 35, verse 30 to 35. And in reading this passage, I'll be reading it from the message translation, not King James. Message translation. Moses told the Israelites, see, God has selected Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. He's filled him with the spirit of God, with skill, with ability, and know how for making all sorts of things to design and work in gold, in silver, and bronze to carve stones and set them, to carve wood, working in every kind of skilled craft. And he's also made him a teacher. He and Oholiab, son of Ahisamak, of the tribe of Dan, he has gifted them with the know-how needed for carving, for designing, for weaving, and embroidering in blue, purple, and scarlet fabrics, and in fine linen. They can make anything and design anything. I like that last statement. They can make anything and design anything. I like to read it one more time. They can make anything and design anything. As you have encountered my ministry this morning, may the grace to make to design, to create, to invent, to achieve, to make happen, rest upon your life. May you bless your generation. And then not just you alone, may your children be blessed. May this grace rest on your family. May God distinguish you and give you uncommon testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much, Pastor. I mean, it's amazing that Pastor add life to, to his book. His book is amazing. How many minutes do you with you, sir, in terms of questions? It's rigid. That's the right we can hear them from the kingdom. It's not working well. It's not working well. I understand this to turn around. All right, cool. Can you hear them? All right. We're talking to you. Thank you, Pastor.